Hey everyone, this is Tom from Montac here, and it is obviously April Fools, and who better to have on the weekly Montac matchup than the greatest trickster in the Montac community, Doozy, is here. How are you doing? Hi hey everyone, it's me, Doozy, or aka that, that one troll in the Montac server, and I'm doing really well. <laughs> great to hear it's always good to have you here this is actually the first time we've had you on and uh, I'm sure it will be a memorable one um, let's get right into the first matchup obviously we're not going to look at the Dharma Coast not an alt match um, obviously I haven't had much experience with those guys but let's focus on your matchup with Shadow Galaxy Wolf a very interesting match indeed obviously Wolf always using those Tarotians probably a Tarotian control deck expected from her but you yourself had a, a little bit of interesting history yeah. Uh, obviously, a lot of impact plays, but then you also went to Roche Control yourself, f really forsaking impact, and then I believe you've actually taken up impact again. Um, what are your thoughts in this matchup? I mean, it's a very because interesting Because I'm match. fairly biased, I think I'm going to take the win. What mm -hmm. if I had to say about Shadow, she's actually a really great player in terms of her Tarotian mm -hmm. plays and how smart she uses them. But because of, I think because of the new flush nerf, I think she's going to have a bit more trouble mm. in working with the new yeah, Tarotian's meta. Because now flush can only, be, can only be used four times in the match. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it will be very interesting to see. She has got a bit more practice with that nerf in place. Um, it's definitely a bit of a slippery slope if we increase that. But obviously... I guess the real question is, you know, Impact hasn't had the best track record, but against someone who's more passive like Shard Galaxy Wolf, that actually might do you a lot of favors if that's something you're going to pursue. Uh, do you think this match will be easier or harder than other matches based on that kind of stylistic matchup? I think Impact would be a... Like, for now, like with the current Montag meta, I think Impact isn't that great. Like because of mm -hmm. the current struggles the impact players have, like I experienced the impact plays. I was an impact player after all. Mm. And I think that Tarotians mm -hmm. is like one of the greatest combos with impact ever, but impact isn't So you think it'd be a impact bit... isn't that great in terms of the meta right now. So you think this matchup with Shadow Galaxy will especially with the meta the way it is, it's just gonna be a little bit tougher than normal. But uh I mean, that is assuming you do bring impact to the party, so uh, you've done some incredible damage when running Tarotians by themselves, so uh, it could be a very interesting matchup. Yeah. I'm really keen to see it, definitely. Uh, well, let's go on to the next match. This is an interesting one, because you've got kind of your two least favorite opponents for you to face are taking each other on, with former champion Dan B taking on two-time former champion, champion Charging Badger. Dan B, of course, with the cursed steel edge that you hate yeah. to see and uh, Badger with the classic Sky Soldiers that are also quite annoying for impact decks. Um, they're actually going to go at it. I don't know how often they've played each other. This is probably one of the very few times. Uh, how do you see this match going and who you think is going to take for it? For both of them, it's really tough for me to say this is as an anti Sewage player, but Dan B has a bigger chance of winning if he is able to pull off his mm -hmm. Axe Head creature. And because he can also have the Blitz Kaiser as a plan B. That's true. Although they do sacrifice that Kaiser for more Axe Head creatures using Revolution. So I guess it's going to come down to how well can Badger shut down that Axe Head with specialty removal. Potentially from that Horn Wing could be the way to do it. But uh, it's going to be brutal. Do you think? So you're saying Dan B you think has got this yeah, one? Yeah, I think Dan B has got the win. Or if, or if a Badger Fair somehow enough. gets the pot armor and then B gets some bad rolls, I think Badger can have a chance to turn the table around. Sure. Okay. Interesting. Definitely a great match for sure. And of course, ties are allowed in that match, so we could just see a really long uh, yeah, wait, drawn can out I make match. A proposal? However, Badger has never had a draw. Yeah. Wait, can yeah. I make a proposal? If Badger. If Badger wins this match, I'll play Sky Soldiers for my next match. <laughs> we would love to see it. Uh, Sky Soldier Impact. Badger actually has done that, by the way. 
Badger created a uh. Sky Soldier impact deck, uh, which did not go well. But well, it didn't do it didn't do horribly. But uh. Uh, you know, could happen. We could see that happening. Let's move on to the semifinals. And first up, we have got a rookie Lucky going an undefeated streak, three and zero at the moment. And they're going to be taking on former champion Apocalyptic. Obviously, Lucky is expected to use those pure gamblers of his and Apocalyptic. Uh. Probably either a Rogue Dragon or potentially um, Eclipse Trooper Dragon deck. Um, obviously, you've had experience with both players and Lucky a bit more recently. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Even though Lucky is a bit of a new player, he's shown a lot of potential. Even when he's first joined... He's actually had a lot of conversations with Ms. Var about mm. V-Meta. Mm. And both of them were really formidable opponents, to say the least. Mm -hmm. I, totally did, I totally didn't destroy Lucky one match, but let's forget <laughs> about that. Knowing Apocalyptic, if he's able to set up the false rider loop, he'll have a good chance of winning. With Lucky okay. actually plays gamblers like you predicted, Mm -hmm. And he and if he gets some good rolls, then the pocket up takes in trouble, no cap. Okay, interesting. So this is more of a mixed feeling you have about this matchup, just based on the luck of the draw, kind of at this stage, who sets up first. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Uh, would you have a definite prediction, or is this more of a just can't quite put your put your finger on it in this situation? It's more of a. 50-50, but if I'm going to say, I think Apocalyptic's going to take the win. Okay, interesting. Alright, well let's get on to the final match, and obviously well, it's not the final match of the weekend, you still got the other matches afterwards, but Zweistein versus Sparrow. Uh, bit of a sleeper match, this one. Obviously, Zweistein has seen a lot of the success with their uh, Beowulf Gambler, mm. and Sparrow yeah. has been using Rogue Beasts actually quite well, and they do have a lot of great ways to counter Life Gamblers, especially by allowing them to shuffle Life Gamblers back into the deck, stopping them from getting a lot of their Perish Pile plays off. So if Sparrow Ooh. takes that route, that could be quite detrimental to Zweistein, regardless of the fact that Sparrow has a lot less experience. Um... Do you think Zweistein takes this just based on the fact they have reached the title, they were a, a dominant force, even though their deck may be at a massive disadvantage? For Zweistein's spell, I actually haven't seen Rogue Beast in the meta a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been long since I've actually seen someone use Rogue Beast besides me when mm. it released. Mm. But, but for Zweistein's deck, I think Beowulf Gambler is definitely something very interesting. Mm -hmm. And Beowulf is definitely a very strong creature depending on how you use it. Like that one time when I had like a bunch of cards in my asset power and I just and I just got the win from that Beowulf. Yeah. It has to be stopped immediately or it will it will take over the match. Um so you're thinking Zweistan's gonna come out of this pretty strong and just continue on to the grand final? I think because Sparrow is so a bit of a rookie, I think Svide, being more experienced, I think he's going to take the win. Okay, interesting. Now, of course, because the grand final is also happening, um, based on your predictions, that would mean that Lucky and Sparrow would be competing for third, and Apocalyptic and Zweistein would be competing for first. In that battle for third, do you think Lucky would beat Sparrow in that situation, or do you think Sparrow would beat Lucky? If Lucky and Sparrow had to get had to have a match, I think Lucky's gonna take the win. Okay, and then in the grand final, obviously that would mean it's the exact same two people as the previous tournament grand final. Do you think Apocalyptic gets the win this time, or do you think it's Weistein further cements uh, uh, their legitimacy by becoming? That's a very hard one. Yeah, that's definitely a very hard one. Mm -hmm. So Svi, so very like. Apocalyptic and Svi, they have decks that are literally the opposite to each other. Mm. Force Rider Dragon can send your cards back into your deck, which might trouble Svi a bit to set it to set up his Beowulf. Mm. But I think it's gonna end in Apocalyptic getting the win. Ooh, that would be quite interesting. Uh, that would be the first ever two-time European champion. 
and uh, the third person ever to get the title more than once after Misfire and uh, Badger, of course. So uh, that's pretty intense. Uh, well, as you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've been asking all the, all the guests that come on board if they were in charge of Montac, the trading card game, and they got to ban one card. Obviously, it's my policy to have no ban lists. I don't particularly like them. But in this situation, Doozy, the trickster, is in charge. They get full reign, and they get to select one card that shall never be played competitively. What card would that be? You know me. I'll always go with Steel Edge. Like, okay. as, like specifically, Axet Creature. <laughs> that thing scares me. Uh, yeah, that's actually a fair call. It is actually a prime target for a lot of these faster paced decks to use as an OTK potential target. So, um, it is probably the best boss monster in the game at this stage. So that's definitely a fair call. Um, but yeah, no. And you have a, you have an interesting. Uh, you don't like to, you don't like Steel Edge at all. You don't even want to play them. You don't even want to touch them. They like they like the plague to you, aren't they? Yeah, I'm too scared of Steel Edges. <laughs> like, if I had a chance to ban just one single card from my from Montag competitively, it's just gonna be Axed Creature right away. Uh, the funny thing is, I don't think a lot of people would disagree. I think, uh, even though Apocalyptic said uh, Synergy Impact last week, they later told me they would definitely pick Axe Head, uh, just based on more meta dominance in that situation. Um, but yeah, no, it's solid, solid pick overall. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so thank you for coming along and uh, giving your picks. Is there anything you want to say to all the Doozy fans out there? It's very great being being able to come in to come on to here and talk with Montac. But, but anyways, I'm still a troll. <laughs> awesome. And uh, you know, make sure to click on those hidden messages from Doozy. You never know which one's gonna be uh <laughs> which one's gonna be a troll, but it's, you know <laughs> Yeah, it's probably gonna be a troll. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh great to finally have you on. Awesome to have another former champion join us. Uh, thank you very much for coming on and uh, going to be a great week and uh, wish you good luck in your match. Yeah, see ya. Alright, see ya.